Good evening. Welcome to worship. Glad that uh, you can be with us tonight as we uh, celebrate the season of Pentecost and roll through the uh, months uh, and uh, the days of August. Hopefully it's uh, getting cooler and there's rain in our future. Uh, seems like that's something we should, uh, we should keep in our prayers at all times these days. So we want to, you know, they got, always got to do that, you know, where you get enough, but not too much. So it's a balancing act this time of year, I get it. But um, We uh, begin with worship uh, on confession and, and forgiveness. You can find that on page 94 in the front of the red hymnal. And we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We'll take a few moments of silence to confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another, and to where we have given love, and to where we have received the love of God. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sin. And as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of that sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our opening hymn is in the back of the red hymnal, number 812, Faith of Our Father.
The Lord be with you. O God, judge eternal. You love justice and hate oppression. You call us to share your zeal for truth. Give us courage to take our stand with all victims of bloodshed and greed, and following your servants and prophets, to look to the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And at this time, we will now have readings from Scripture. The first reading is from Hebrews, the 11th chapter, beginning at the 29th verse. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land, but when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time will fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and ghosts, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The word of the Lord. Hi, everybody. It is another hot day here in Blair, Nebraska. So, of course, I'm outside because I'm crazy like that. Welcome to another children's message. Today, I'm going to read from the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Have you ever won a trophy? or a medal, or an award for some something that you did? I think all of us have at some point. When I think of medals, I think of the Olympics. 
have you guys ever watched the Olympics? There's so many different parts of the Olympics, right? There's the winter and the summer, there's running, there's basketball, there's archery, all kinds of things. So I'm gonna tell you a story that happened at the Olympics back when it was in Barcelona, Spain. The world saw one of the greatest moments in Olympic history. A man named Derek Redmond had dreamed all his life of winning the gold medal in the 400 meter race, which is one time around the track. He'd worked hard to get to the Olympics and his dream was within reach. He had made it to the semifinals. He was ready to go. He could see the finish line as he was coming around that final turn and then suddenly he fell to the ground. He had torn a muscle in his leg. He struggled to his feet and he started hopping to the finish line because he needed to finish that race no matter what. And suddenly this large man came running out of the stands. He pushed past the security guards and he went straight out onto the track. It was Derek's dad. His name is Jim Redmond and he put his arm around Derek and he helped him and he said, you're not gonna do this alone, I'm here with you. And they did, they went all the way to the finish line together and at first the crowd was silent. They didn't know what to do, but then they rose to their feet and they cheered and they clapped and they cried. Derek Redmond did not win the gold medal that day, but he walked away with an incredible memory of his loving father who saw him in pain, ran to him and helped him finish the race. So our Bible lesson describes a race that you and I are running that's even bigger than the Olympic race. The Bible tells us since we're surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses, other people just like us, let us run the race that God has set before us. Throw aside anything that slows you down and keep your eyes on Jesus. So what is this race that God put before us? It's a race that we're running following the example that Jesus set for us because we are his disciples. So we race and we go in obedience to God's word. When Jesus says, follow me, we race behind him. And life is that race. We may struggle we may fall down, we may face some obstacles, maybe we have some hurdles we have to run over, but we have a great crowd of witnesses cheering us on. We have a heavenly father who loves us and helps us when the pain is too great. We have a savior Jesus who left his place in heaven to come live on earth and show us how to run this race. So if we keep our eyes on Jesus, we will cross the finish line and then we will live with God forever in heaven. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, sometimes life is difficult. It's a hard race. Help us keep our eyes on you and keep running that race before us. Remind us that you are always by our side and you've given us friends and family and teachers and guides to cheer us on and keep us on track and sometimes to pick us up when we can't go on. Lord, we thank you for being with us and we thank you for watching over us. In your name we pray, amen. All right, I wanna see you guys out there running that race that God has put before us. Keep your eyes on Jesus and remember that all of us are in the race together and we're all helping each other. Sometimes we're pushing each other on, sometimes we're pulling each other on, or sometimes we're the one that needs to be pulled or pushed because it's just not working out. You guys take care. Everyone's starting school again. I wish you lots of blessings as you start up again. And remember that God loves you. Take care. The Holy Gospel this evening comes from St. Luke in the 12th chapter. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. 
I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I've come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two, two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And he also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it's going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there'll be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky. But why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The gospel of the Lord. So in preaching class, we were going to do these uh, impromptu sermons, and the professor took texts of scripture, put them in a hat, and uh, he had three minutes. You'd draw one out, and you'd go out into the hallway, and while somebody else was giving their three-minute sermon, you had three minutes to prepare your sermon on that text, and then come in and talk for at least three minutes. And he put this text in. And as he put it in, he looked at us and he said, whoever gets this, good luck. It does seem rather strange that Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, comes with such words of division, literally. I've come not to bring peace, I've I've come rather to bring division. Seems like a strange thing, and especially in our world, as fractured as we are these days amongst the various fault lines of our beliefs and our thoughts and our opinions, uh, to have somebody put even more division into those fault lines and fractures, including especially our Lord and Savior, seems rather harsh. But I don't think there's any way to get around it. For Jesus, the cloud of witnesses that... Esther read for us, briefly summarizing some of the faithful ones who made the list and some who made it for salutary reasons and some because they were eaten by lions. Nonetheless, that cloud of witnesses is the family to which Jesus feels most akin to at this time in his life as he's delivering this part of his sermon. It seems that he believes that it truly is coming to an end. And he would rather put his family relations and people like Moses and Noah and Samson and David than with the flesh and blood that bore him. If the world were coming for you, could you say the same? Would God be more important than your mother or your father. That's tough for us because we live in a world where these things are sort of conflated and it's tough for us to distinguish the love that we have perhaps for our parents and the love for God. And many preachers no doubt have stood in pulpits and often used that conflation as a way to describe the love God has for us, comparing it to the love our parents have for us. And so when we hear those kinds of images and those kinds of metaphors over and over and over again to have Jesus come in and say, but it's not the same, kind of pulls us back. Just so happened, because, you know, it's me. I was watching a show many years ago called The Sopranos. Now, I love The Sopranos. I've watched it twice, actually, in its entirety, episode to episode, from the beginning to the end. Some people even say it's the greatest TV show ever done. And uh, from my experience, although I hardly think I've watched every TV show, I would have to say The Sopranos is perhaps the best TV show I've ever seen. But back in the day, it used to start at 8 o'clock at night on a Sunday evening, and the kids were old enough at that time to pretty much use Sunday evening as their last few moments to uh, 
to have a weekend and do whatever they needed to do, talking to friends or finishing homework or whatever the case is, that by 8 o'clock they were usually well in their rooms and well on their way towards Monday morning and inevitably starting school. So I would go downstairs. Now, Chris uh, had the good sense not to watch this TV show. She was upstairs doing something constructive. But uh, me, on the other hand, not so much. And I'm about two or three years into this show. It ran about seven. And I'm about two or three years in, and I'm watching the credits. Now, the show, for those of you who don't know, uh, is basically about this guy named Tony Soprano. That's his name, Tony Soprano, Anthony Soprano. He's a mob boss. And uh, it's, it's about all the struggles that he has being a mob boss, from going from the end of the 20th century into the beginning of the 21st century. It started around the year 2000 or so. And uh, so it was just about that show. It was just about a mob boss. It wasn't all that much different than any other show, like The Godfather or anything like that. But it was absolutely fascinating trying to watch this man navigate between the 20th century world and the 21st century world that was coming at him. And every episode, Tony Soprano just had something come up. One of his people would betray him, or one of his children would burn up a car, or, you know, kid, just whatever life happens, you know. And so I'm watching the credits this night. Sunday night's nice and calm. And, and, and the show, and it says The Sopranos. You know, just big graphic of Sopranos. And I was struck, I was like, you know, the show's not about the Sopranos. I mean, there are some Sopranos. There's Tony Soprano. He's got a wife. He's got two kids. There's his mom. She's around for a few episodes. And, and he's got an uncle. And I was like, but they're never really in it. So why do they call the show The Sopranos? It should be Soprano or Tony Soprano or something. Because it's really only about one guy. And then it hit me. You see, you don't have to be named Soprano to be in the mob family. You just have to have a boss named Soprano. And if your boss is named Soprano, you're a Soprano too, no matter what your last name is. Because in that family, the mob family of Tony Soprano, we're all Sopranos. And I was like, what? Is that what Jesus was talking about in the Gospel of Luke? And because I was not watching it on demand, I had to actually watch The Sopranos, and at the end I went and read the Gospel of Luke again. Do you see? What Jesus is saying is that if God is your boss, if that is the prime relationship in your life, you're a child of God no matter what your last name is. If that key relationship defines everything that you are and who you are, who you owe your loyalty to, who you work with, who provides your friends, who provides your life, who provides your resources, who provides your food, who provides your sustenance, whoever, that puts you in that family. And when you are in that family, you are in that family regardless of what your last name is, regardless of who your parents are, regardless of how you were born or how you behave. And Jesus says that when we are into the family of God, baptized and collected in the family of God, God becomes our parent. And this cloud of witnesses that Esther was reading about out of the book of Hebrews, these become not just people, stories and pages, but actually our ancestors. Our long ago brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, grandmas and grandpas who have led us to this point of life in our faith journey. And so we are part of the ongoing cloud of witnesses for those who come after us. Not by virtue of our parenting, but by virtue of the promise of God in Jesus Christ. 
and what Jesus wants us to see as we get towards the end, in his case, and maybe in our case we might see ourselves coming towards an end, perhaps, perhaps not, is that it is this family of God that is so vital because God is the one who names us and claims us. And unlike the Tony Sopranos of the world, God has a huge difference in one particular area of family. And that is what happens when you screw up. In your family, when somebody did something they shouldn't have done, how did the family deal with it? In the Soprano family, needless to say, there were mafia. It, it didn't end well, and you usually wound up in the bottom of the Hudson Bay. But God offers forgiveness. And when God is the prime relationship in our lives and the creator and giver of our name and who we are and what we are about, when we screw up, we get then not punishment, death, but rather forgiveness and hope. Because to be baptized in to the relationship of God in Jesus Christ is to have Jesus Christ be our brother who offers himself for us in those moments when we have let the family down, when we have not behaved as we know we should with each other or with our neighbors or even with our own selves. When we've looked in the mirror and felt so bad that we can't possibly be people that anyone could trust or love, when our self-esteem is sunk so low that it is impossible for to even get out of bed, it is precisely there that Jesus lifts us up, brings our feet to the edge of the bed and slides on the slippers so that we can once again pad across the floor to live another day. And when we fail each other, and in the midst of our greed, or in the midst of our lusts and desires, our angers, our stealing, our murder, <coughs> to understand that the promise and love of God binds at that moment so that we can be healed and made whole again at our lowest time. So we live in this family of God, called ourselves at this stage Christians, but we've been called other things over the years, and that might not last either. But as it stands right now, this is the family. These are the credits that roll across the screens of our lives. In the relationship we have with God through Jesus Christ, we are brought together with one. And it will mean that some of the relationships that come through other means, like blood or genetics or whatever the case may be, will be tested. And fathers and sons and mothers and daughters might not get along. The in-law thing, you already knew that was happening. But nonetheless, it is living in that love of God that defines who we are and what we are about. And what makes us Christian is not who our parents were, but who our God is. And what makes us loving and forgiving is not how we were born or the name we carry, but the love that we show as it was shown to us by our brother, Jesus of Nazareth, who died on a cross, so we can live. Amen. We'll take a few moments for examination and reflection.
Gracious God, help us to live amongst our brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, aunts and uncles, in this family you have created through Jesus Christ. In the power of your Holy Spirit, open us up to your way of living and being so that we can share moments of grace and paths of hope and peace. Give us all the strength and courage to live as your children, surrounded by clouds of witnesses who gather us, encourage us, and lead us in paths of love. Amen. Our hymn of the day is actually in the blue hymnal, the With One Voice hymnal. Uh, it's in the back of that hymnal, number 778, O Christ the Same. During this season of Pentecost, we are using the Apostles' Creed as a way to share our faith together and the love of God that we have in Jesus Christ. The Apostles' Creed is found on page 105 in the front of the red hymnal, so there'll be a slight change of color here as we say together the Apostles' Creed, the story of God's love 
from the beginning of creation through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and into the life of the Spirit we share together. So I invite you to join with me as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And this evening, trusting in God's extraordinary love, we come near to the Holy One in prayer. I'll end each petition of this prayer with merciful God. You may respond together. Receive our prayer. Arise, God, and sustain your creation. We pray for all places affected by natural disasters. Transform the devastation of floods and fires into fertile ground for new life and growth. Fill heaven and earth with rain in your life-giving spirit. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain those who are oppressed. We pray for people harmed by racist discrimination, for all people discriminated against each other by ableism or their gender identity. Rescue us from all the systems that degrade each other and our fellow human beings. Merciful God, receive our prayer. And arise, O oh God, and sustain this congregation. We pray for this community, celebrating with those who rejoice, and weeping with those who weep. Let us take a few moments of silence to remember those who bring a special concern, either of joy or care, before God on this day, and seek the healing power of Christ and the Holy Spirit. Be with all our schools opening this week. Guide teachers and staff. Protect your children and open all of us to your glorious creation. In our joy and in our tears, be near us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. And surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, we remember the saints who have gone before us. At this moment, let us remember those who have died and those who grieve and mourn their loss. Holy Spirit, may we run with perseverance the race set before us until we find our rest in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom, our Savior and Lord. Amen. During this worship, we receive an offering and a basket in the back. You may place a donation in there before or after service, uh, as you desire. And in honor of those gifts that we have received, as well as all of the don donations that we receive here at First Luther, we offer this prayer. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And we prepare our hearts and minds for Holy Communion. Let us pray. Gracious God, we remember in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, 
This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death and resurrection until he comes again. And so let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We invite all of you this evening to join with us in Holy Communion. Please come down through the center aisle. You'll receive the gifts of bread and wine. We also have gluten-free wafers and grape juice available uh, for those who request it. Uh, after you've received the elements, you may head back to your seats through the side aisles. There are baskets there where you may place the empty uh, cup uh, after you have finished that. We'll commune my left side first, uh, your right side, and uh, come down through the center aisle. After we've communed this side, we'll switch over to this side and commune those who are on my right. Uh, after we've communed everyone coming forward who is able, we'll bring communion out to those in the congregation who are not able to come forward at this time. Please come. The body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you.
now may the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace, now and always. Amen. Let us pray. O God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. May your Spirit strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we head out this evening, have just a couple of announcements we'd like to highlight. First off, in the first part of October, it's a few months away, but we are going to be uh, updating our photo directory, and we invite all of you to participate uh, in this uh, photo directory process. Um, we'll be having an opportunity for you to take family photos, individual photos, all sorts of things. Uh, the sign-up is going to be primarily online, so you can actually sign up online anytime starting now. Uh, there's sign-up instructions at various positions around the, the uh, congregation uh, on posters, uh, and you'll be receiving uh, information about it in many ways, letters and the ambassador and e-blast as well on how to do that. But also we'll have sign-ups here uh, and, uh, after worship services uh, over the course of the next uh, six, six, seven weeks. So hopefully everybody can get a chance to participate and sign up and be part of this photo directory. It'll be a great opportunity coming out of COVID to see just how many uh, people have changed uh, and what uh, people we haven't seen. And we've received a lot of new folks. Of course, many of our folks, some of our folks have passed away. We've received many through baptism. So it'll be very interesting to, uh, to have this experience. We'll update our roster. There's all kinds of opportunities. So that's coming up in the first part of October, and I ask you to kind of pay attention to that and see if you can make a special opportunity to, to schedule that uh, when that arrives. And then also note, in a couple weeks, we are going to have the fall kickoff. It's going to come right after this service. And so we're going to have the backpack blessing. We're going to have the giving of the Bibles. All that stuff's going to happen here at the 5 o'clock service. And there's going to be a big party afterwards. There's going to be hot dogs. There's going to be games. There's going to be a family movie over in the Life Center. So there's going to be a lot of opportunity that comes up uh, on Saturday, August 27th. So uh, just note that that's going to be a fun time as we, uh, the kids start school here on Wednesday. Uh, so uh, it's going to be a great opportunity uh, to just get rolling here with the fall season as well. Of course, the garden market's going strong, and uh, so we invite you to take a look at that. Uh, and any donations received through the garden market go to ELCA World Hunger. I invite you to receive the benediction. And as we go out into this week, may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord's face shine on us and be gracious to us. And may the Lord's holy countenance smile down upon us all and give us peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our closing hymn is in the back of the red hymnal, number 805, 805.
Have a great evening. Go in peace and serve the Lord.